Cough, cough. Where's my coffee? <coughs> if you have a cough in the morning, you need some coffee. Uh, if you have morning phlegm, you need some phlegmy. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Muss ich haben. Okay. Let's just put this over here. I had a request, and I try to take requests if I am able. Someone wants me to do something that I'm physically and mentally able to do, I will do it. Someone had asked about the less fugly cousin to the Fifth Avenue pen that I just raked over the coals yesterday. And I'm not going to change my mind about it. There's something just so wrong about this pen. And it's still wrong. It's just wrong. So I'm putting that aside. The, the issue about the pens I'm showing you now, um, or shortly, are the fact that the ballpoint pen had just been invented. And a lot of pen companies that did reputable pens had a real hard time coming up with their version of the ballpoint pen, as well as their continuing to sell fountain pens to people who wanted to buy fountain pens, but they were, they were thinking that these ballpoint pens that were coming out were the coolest things that ever happened. So therefore, um, you have to make me want to buy this pen, this old fashioned ink pen kind of thing. So one of the things that fountain pen manufacturers did was to try to make them slimmer or easier or more modern looking or whatever. And a pen that uh, Eversharp came up with was the Burp Pen. Like a baby, you have to... They're, they're called the Ventura. And somehow... I don't know if it was the baby boom was also happening then. Who the heck knows why they came up with this ad campaign. But it was like a baby. You have to burp a pen when it's full. And you'd fill the pen using this little squeezy thing. You'd unscrew the barrel. Oh, come on, what's wrong with you? There's a squeezy thing in there. It's supposed to be in there. There. See? That's the squeezy thing. Why did that... Why is that in there? This would be put over that thing and cemented better than it is. And there'd be a sack in there and you'd squeeze this thing just like you did with your, your uh, Aerometric 51. Um, and then you'd put this thing back on, and when you were done, you had to burp the pen. Now, you don't put the, the ad showed little baby on the shoulder of the mom or the dad, and his back was being, um, tapped ever so gently for him to let out that big old belch. But in this case, I, I think you were supposed to, I forget what you were supposed to do. I think you were supposed to, um, you filled it and then you had to sort of prime it somehow. Why can't I just do the simple research? Well, you can do this. You can do the simple research. You can find out what you were supposed to do with it. You were supposed to maybe squeeze it. Like, you know, and you'd watch the bubble of air escape, and then you knew it was, there was no air in it. I think that's probably what you were supposed to do. If 
fill it up and then squeeze the air out. <sighs> okay, let's pretend that we had something nice to say about this pen. It's really hard. <laughs> um, this, the Foley Sterling one, if it screwed on there correctly, and here's the sack is still in this one. They were the reason that the the section fell out of this thing is um, I think the section the plastic that they were making pens out of was really not very good. It it had a, a rubbery feel to it. Um, it's a it's not a I don't know how to describe it. You sometimes find late model pens that have when you when you're holding a skyline pen in your hands, uh, you the plastic feels hard, and when you hold a Ventura plastic in the hand, the plastic seems. somehow rubberier. So I think they changed the plastics. Well, I know they did. And maybe they shrink, which is why this isn't fitting in here. The reason it's fitting here is this shrank too, maybe. The cap seems a little loose on the back. They're very uh, awkwardly weighted. Um, the when you post this on the back, it's really quite heavy back here. And it's surprising, it feels surprisingly un unbalanced. The balance of its mind is gone. Um, it also, because of the shrinking, maybe, the cap doesn't want to really stay on as tightly as it might. They're relatively rare pens because Again, they were competing with the ballpoint pen, and how do you how do you make a pen cheaper? The nib is smaller. It's a gold nib. It's still the nib people are still in business making nice nibs. The feet is slightly smaller than the other ones, so these are not interchangeable in the way that they can be on other pens. Um, this nib only fits this pen. I think their slightly older version of pen, this nib, I think only fit this pen too. I mean, these aren't interchangeable either, but they their nibs were slightly smaller. There's something though about the shape of this nib this is sort of what you think the 51 nib would look like if you unscrewed the the uh, shroud, the whatever it's called, shell. Um, so it's it's kind of an interesting... God damn it, see what happened? How do I... Stupid pen. Stupid pen. But this nib... Let's see if I can zoom in. Let's pretend I like this pen. This is the perfect nib for it because it's it's sort of looks like a some sort of scalpel that you'd use for delicate surgery on the fingertips or something, and it has this very sharp, slightly flexible nib line. This nib also reminds me of dip pen nibs. Uh, from the, there's something just about the shape of it is so fine that it looks like some of the early dip pen nibs, Victorian era. The thing about the the burp pen that I have not mentioned, and maybe this is where they came up with the name, is it smells really bad. Hard rubber has a smell to it. Plastics generally don't have a smell to them. This one really does. It's just, it's this foul, 
smell of a certain kind of a plastic. And you, it's something that doesn't go away. It's right there. And uh, so maybe, maybe subliminally, parents that were breastfeeding and burping their offspring, maybe they were so desensitized to how stinky their children were, they wouldn't know that how shitty this, how stinky this uh, plastic was. There's no reason for it to smell this way. The only thing I can think of it was cheaper plastic. Why wouldn't you, they use the same plastic they used before? Who knows? So here are here are my two examples. I think I might have another one somewhere. Do I have a gold fill one somewhere? Who knows? Um, they came with matching pencils. I think I must have a gray one. $20. Sterling silver capped pencil. What was I thinking? That was a price I put on it once upon a time. Just, I guess I like sterling, and that was why. Okay, here's some other examples of ever sharp going down the tubes. Their symphony pen was a nice pen, but, you know, relatively. It's not, I don't think, as nice as the Skyline was, but um, it was designed by Raymond Lowy. So you have an actual designer, I mean, a really famous designer. He did Air Force One, and this pen, I think, or a pen that he made for Eversharp was on the cover of Time magazine with his face. And, but at this time they were using this crappy plastic, this rubbery, it feels like you could squeeze this and it would squeeze. That's the, the only way that I could, can describe this plastic. Um, this has the nicer of the two symphony caps. I love that little, uh, that's not a parallel, par parabola. Um, but late late in the day, they, they put little metal threads up here. Now somehow was that supposed to be cheaper? Or is this plastic so crappy that the threads didn't work? Yep. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. So they, the metal was here. Let me just look at the, what this thing says under the loop. Eversharp Symphony made in USA. I never knew that that said that. The plating is coming off of the, I think just they were cutting corners and doing everything they possibly could to to still sell a pen that had a nib that could do that. I need to get some actual ink. <laughs> this watered down red is not doing the trick. It could, you know, be flexible. And but they they had to make, charge, you know, many dollars less for this than they were charging before because they had to compete with the ballpoint pen. So th that was one thing they did. Another thing they did was to make the plastic, the metal caps plastic. So the parts all shrink at the same rate. And then they did things like take out the, you know, this one is a non-Eversharp nib, but they started making Eversharp nibs not out of gold. So the, yeah, this is a non-gold, this is a gold-plated Eversharp nib. Eversharp. And you can see the silver of the base metal. And um, the 
plating wear on this thing. I mean, uh, regular Skyline pens were plated as well, but they didn't wear off like this. Oh, I know. Let's make them match their shoes or their purse. So they came up with this stupid idea. Let's put a little piece of leather. Hey, boss, you can charge an extra dollar if we come up with a routine where they can match their shoes. I don't know what it was supposed to do. Look it up. I don't... I, I presume this is original to the company and not added by some jeweler on Main Street. So, pens late in the day, fountain pen companies late in the day, had to do all sorts of stuff to compete. And most of the competition meant cutting as many corners as you could. Look at this pathetic thing. Little tiny steel nib, rubbery plastic, just awful section. By making the section do this, or did they like save one tiny penny over the course of a three weeks? But they were going down the tubes. That penny was needed to pay the salary of someone for a week's work. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's it's just sad to see <clears throat> these pens go down the tubes. Here's a pencil that goes. Oh, I'm done. That's all I've got to show you. So back to the burp pen. Um, the Ventura, the burp pen. Well, you take a sniff at your. You take a nice breath of fresh air. Remember what that taste s smelled like. And then go to your burp drawer or find your one single burp pen you have or and just take a whiff. It's going to make you I don't know if it'll make you nauseous, but it'll, it'll make you Put the pen back in the drawer and order some flowers and fill your house with flowers just to get rid of that smell. Smell the roses. I don't like this either, you know, and I don't like this. This is what you see on modern fountain pens a lot. You see the the barrel and the threads, and then there's this cliff that goes down to the section. I want this to be smooth. I'm always hitting this big um, bump, which bothers me in any pen, and it's bothering me here. I'm just in a grumpy mood. Anyway, there it is, the burp pen. Now, did all these fit in the same drawer, do you think? I think these all are in the Fifth Avenue drawer. Just put them back. The nicest, the coolest pen, sort of of that late era of Eversharp, I thought was this one. This this is I, the someone just told me what the name is. Envoy the Envoy, and there's no difference here. It's smooth. There's no threads. It's a slip cap, and one of the really cool things about this pen is see that little tiny indentation on the lever. No, you can't. Can you see it now? Can you hear me now? Okay, get in focus. There, you see it now. That little, that little bump. That's for the cap to stop. 
That's the brake for the cap. Hits that little bump and it stops. And I think that's kind of cool. That's I don't know. I just think that's kind of cool. It's it looks like it's the flaw in the Navajo rug when you're looking at it saying, well, what the hell is that little line there for? But that line serves a purpose. Um, I think this is really quite handsome. This is, if you took the burp pen and made it have sex with the Eversharp Skyline, this might be the result. The all metal Eversharp Skyline. I don't think they made an all metal symphony pen. Maybe they did for swanky clients. But um, anyway, it's really, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. How difficult is it here? Here's the all metal Eversharp Skyline. Could we be in focus? Is that too much to ask phone, smartphone? Smartphone, there, thank you. Here's the Eversharp Skyline Full Metal, owned by J. Fred Smith. Nice engraving along the cap edge. And this pen plus the Ventura would have produced this. It almost looks like it's a symphony pen, but this, it's so thin that it has to be the Ventura. And um, I really, there's something about these pens, the metal um, skylines that I really like. I, I, I would love to get one that's made in sterling. I, did they ever set, do such a thing? Write your answers below. Anyway, there you go. The Ventura. The burp pen. Bye.